Good morning and welcome to Talking Cafe Live on Monday the 29th of March 2021 uh, and today we are going to talk about autism, it being the start of Autism Awareness Week. Firstly to introduce myself, I'm Jane Lillis, I'm village agent with the West Somerset team uh, and the village agent services have continued to work throughout the pandemic. We are there to help you. <clears throat> Please feel free to contact your local village agent uh, or, or to call our main number um, and uh, we will be there to help us, <clears throat> to help you. Excuse me, I seem to have got a frog this morning. Um, as I say, today we're going to be talking about autism and I've got some guests in the studio with me who are people who have uh, in-depth experience of dealing with autism. I have got Alison Ward from Autism Somerset. I've got Peter Wilson, who was a past chair uh, of the National Autistic Society Somerset branch. Uh, and we're also being joined by Alex Crick um, from Sweet Surprise and Ilminster, who organise uh, day activities for those with autism and learning difficulties. And with Alex, uh, she also has someone, a gentleman called Josh, who's going to talk about his experiences with autism. Um, so to hand over to those with more knowledge than I have to give us uh, a bit of background on autism uh, and how we can uh, increase awareness of autism and help those who are suffering from the condition of autism, um, then I'm going to pass over to Alison firstly. Alison, good morning. Good morning, Jane. Thank you so much for inviting Autism Summer along this morning. Um, so yeah, I'm Alison Ward. Uh, I'm one of the directors of Autism Center. Um, I'm co-director with a gentleman called Stephen Bradshaw, who people may know from writing a book called about autism, but also because he set up um, one of the first schools for um, young people with autism um, way back. Um, and uh, Autism Somerset was set up by a gentleman called Campbell Main. I know Peter and Catherine um, knew very well and um, unfortunately he passed away. And so I've been left to kind of carry on with Autism Somerset as best I can without his um, input. Uh, so I have, um, within that then, Autism Somerset is, is primarily a website. It was set up because Campbell set on, sat on the NICE guidelines and part of those guidelines was around having a website that signpost people. Um, so we have a website, www.autismsomerset.org. Um, that website has some links on there for other organisations like Somerset Parent Care Forum, um, for Sendias, for other organisations that may help with education healthcare plans for diagnosis um, for other comorbidities so other things that may be running alongside um, autistic traits etc um, sensory processing um, information on there we have information on there about our 12-step anxiety program and we also have on there an anxiety um, download so, so and like an anxiety plan so one of the core things that you know um, that for people with autism anxiety is right up there and quite often anxiety is what drives some of the, the behavior some of the avoidance um, some of the challenges it is like this inability to predict what will happen next which quite often is one of the you know kind of the key challenges as well um, so from our perspective, we kind of have the website that kind of holds as much information as possible. Um, people can also drop us an email and we send uh, a monthly newsletter as well. So that's news at autismsomerset.org. So that, again, is a, a newsletter where we try and find events or information and research and um, research that is being carried out. And we put all of that in our um, website as a, and our newsletter that kind of comes from our website as well. Uh, so people are more than welcome to to hop on there and, and, and sign up to the newsletter. Uh, we also deliver training. So part of, of what we do is in this raising awareness and is, is to be delivering training, um, but training with strategies. So there are lots of really good online courses now that have the history of autism, have information about diagnostic criteria. Um, and then we try and add a, a, a training that, uh, that is very bespoke to the people that are 
on the courses and then we can add in any strategies etc um, within that then I would say that I kind of come from this as a parent perspective as, as well as from professional perspective um, and I work very closely with Dr Karina Eaton who's a clinical psychologist who specialist field is autism as well so from our perspective we will kind of say um, from the um, raising awareness point of view is certainly to be for people to be certainly join these types uh, for people to be wearing the hidden disabilities lanyard so that can be really helpful. I haven't got one with me today, but again, that's a really useful lanyard to be to be wearing during these times, particularly if we're out and about. Um, to be looking at how we communicate. So think about our communication strategy. So are we giving too much information? Uh, are we using too many words in our communication? Are we being um, graphic and not specific? Um, so certainly communication is something that we need to be thinking about. Um, we'd also be saying to be mindful of actions and behaviours. So all behaviour has meaning. So to be mindful of, of behaviours. Uh, to be thinking about the thinking process then. Um, am I communicating in a way where I'm giving the other person time to think about and process the information? And then also to be thinking about sensory processes, what's going on in the environment. So we call that cats. Um, so how am I communicating? Am I adapting my communication? How is the other person communicating? Um, what actions and behaviours, you know, what routines are in place? But also being mindful that all behaviour has meaning. Using this thinking process, so thinking about the other person's um, processing skills and time, and then taking into account kind of what's going on sensory-wise. So, so the environment, the lighting, the sounds, the smells, kind of what else is going on. So. For us, that's the kind of thing that we focus on, but also as much as anything, we focus on reducing anxiety. Um, but I'd say kind of that's the key thing would be, you know, this inability to predict what's going to happen next so that we can offer some kind of um, information about what, what's going to be expected of the person and what we're mm -hmm. doing next. That makes a little bit of, of sense in a nutshell, kind of what we do. We also support families and individuals so we'll talk about education and healthcare plans and we can help um, advise and people around PIP assessments um, the diet, how, how to what the pathway is at the moment I know in Somerset you know we're kind of a little bit stuck with the pathway so we're kind of working really closely with, with local authority around what that pathway is going to look like um, and collaborating with local authority and um, uh, the, the the team, the pediatric team, and also the other teams that are around to support that. So yeah, we're trying to engage with that as much as possible. Um, so yeah, that that's kind of us in a nutshell. But primarily, we're there if we can to to offer support to signpost. Fantastic. Can. Yeah, Alison, some really useful information there. And I've had a look at your website, which also has a lot of very useful info and a lot of useful links as well. Um, I'm sure we'll come back as we get some discussion going a little bit, bit later on. I just want to welcome Alex and Josh. Um, just to say hello. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I've just sort of done a brief introduction. Uh, you two the back to the Talking Cafe and the Village Agent Service. Um, Alison's had a little um, time to tell us about what Autism Summit are getting up to. Peter's going to now have um, a chat with us about living with autism. Them and uh, or with I think your Peter's son um, is a has autism um but they've also organized um the one of the somerset groups the west somerset autism group so they're going to have a chat um and then we'll come back to you alex and josh okay yeah, um right. in a moment all right so all that's right. fabulous so peter um if we, we can uh, we're going to unmute peter he's been muted because we're getting a bit of feedback on his line hopefully it's not going to be too bad um but yeah we're looking forward to what peter and carolyn are going to tell us so welcome and uh okay you need to unmute yourself peter i can't unmute you <laughs> there we are. that's it okay yes sorry about the echo um yes i'm here with my, my wife catherine and uh we have uh, a son who uh, is in his 40s now and uh, so we've experienced uh, how he's been um, you know, at school and through his 
life, trying to get work, etc. And um, these are all been rather challenging times, both for him and for us. Yeah. And um, I, I, I don't know what the current situation is, but when I was chair of the Somerset branch, which was mainly sort of fielding questions and problems that people had and trying to signpost them to places, it, it was in the field of education. Um, I hope things have moved on a little bit uh, now because people did find things very difficult at school, um, especially in transitions when they moved up to different years to different schools, especially. And um, I know uh, I I'll try not to refer to our son too much because uh, I haven't asked his permission to do that, so I'll, I'll keep uh, sort of rather vague comments about uh, about him. But uh, I know he. He did find, certainly in his early days, that he was put in a, a class of um, children with behavioural difficulties. Now, Ben is a quiet uh, child, so he's a quiet, uh, quiet man. Um, he didn't sort of cause disruption, but he was just very slow at asking for help, and he was uh, just getting behind, and uh, so he. He experienced great problems there, so he was put with this particular group, which Brilliant. really didn't, didn't fit into him at all, really. Um, and uh, in common with the uh, people uh, with all, uh, on the autistic spectrum, because of course autism isn't just one thing, it can be quite a variety of things, uh, uh, including Asperger's, some people put that separate, some people include it, so we're including it at the moment. <laughs> um, uh, as Alison said, you know, sensitivity to lights and colours and smells, and um, he doesn't like getting touched on the shoulder, you know, so don't do that to uh, people with uh, on the autistic spectrum unless you know them, unless you know that they're comfortable with that. In fact, physical contact most of all is just best left uh, left until you sort of really get a good relationship with them and know what they know what they want. So ask their permission first. Can I give you a hug? That's that's quite helpful. Sometimes I say yes, sometimes I say no. And, um, you know, Ben has, of course, come to the stage where he's got to looking for work. And that's been quite difficult. Um, some, some employers have thought they knew how to deal with people on the autistic spectrum, but actually when it's come to it, they haven't. Because he's encountered problems, perhaps, with, um, with the various sensory um, problems. Sometimes it was with actually saying, um, not knowing what to do. Um, people on the autistic spectrum love a, love a routine. So sometimes in the workplace, it isn't a routine. If you're on a factory production line, then yes, that's appropriate. That's got a... Uh, Easy. Yes, yes, that's got a routine. <laughs> uh, but if you're working like in a kitchen, as Ben started off with, um, no, that's not uh, that's not so easy because things vary. So, yeah, he, he, uh, so uh, that's something to take into account if you're thinking of taking somebody on um, for employment. But they are very reliable. They don't hang around talking to other people. They get on with the job. Once they're told something, they might need a little, little bit of time to actually for the thing for the instructions mm -hmm. to sink in. But once, it. once they've got it, that's it. That's there. And perhaps it's useful to say something like, have a list of what their duties are, and say, well, when you finish that, you move on to this. And who they contact um, uh, if, if they do have a problem. And uh, that, that, that those, those things have been quite helpful to us. And uh, um, as parents, you know, it, it's been quite a stress. I, th I think um, Catherine, as a mum, has uh, found it more than ever because very often, certainly in the younger days at school, people used to blame the mother, uh, which is utterly ridiculous, really, and not helpful at all. Um, but um, yes, I, th I think. And, the, and this, of course, is because people don't understand the spectrum, the fact that it affects everybody differently, um, and that uh, there's no. Um, clear-cut um, route that this takes. It is a condition that is on a spectrum, and every case is different. Yes, which is which is why I think 
something like Autism Awareness Week is so wonderful because it does raise the profile and uh, you know it gets in the national news on the uh, documentary programs and all this sort of thing as well as local stuff so uh, hopefully uh, a few more people will be helped uh, during this week. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. That's really helpful. And if we can now introduce Alex Crick from Sweet Surprise. Hello. Hello. With her. Hi, Josh. Nice Hi, to Alex. See you. Nice Lovely to see you. Um, Alex is with Sweet Surprise, which is an organisation that arranges um, day um, activities for those with learning difficulties and autism. Uh, and Josh is with her in the studio to uh, give his experiences of living with autism. Um, so I'll hand over to you two to tell us a little bit about what you do, Alex, and how you find it, uh, Josh. So, yeah, look forward to hearing your stories. Do you want me to go first? Well, um, yes. Well, above all, yes, this is what I am, <laughs> is, um, is autistic, and I do suffer very badly as we heard with anxiety and I have had times where I have been tipped over the edge and even sometimes I feel like getting violent and I occasionally do shout out and swear and do all that business and I do struggle with it daily and it has been a big effect in my daily life to just get on with normal life generally and push forward and knowing how to deal with it and and sometimes I have gone down the lines where it just really drains you in your head and it like really just knackers you out even. Yeah, um, I can, I, yeah. And I guess of the, since the start of the COVID pandemic, things have been a bit difficult too, because yeah. the, the opportunities for support and interaction as and everything changing must have been quite difficult. Yeah, yes, it was difficult. And also we've been locked down, especially before, you know, when COVID just kicked in and there was no vaccines and not allowed to interact. You know, when like, you're at home and you're, you're in your own space, it's, it's good for a while, you know, and you've got your own space because like, your home's your own comfort zone. But when, like, like the pandemic like, kicked in and like you were staying at home like for three months and so on, as time dragged on, and you couldn't go anywhere you just felt the sense of being like drowned in and like the anxiety could kick in that bit more and yeah and mm. and i i just struggled after a while and and you know it it can make you feel depressed and even almost close to tears sometimes yeah and where where did you find support did you find support through alex's organization or online well, I, I, I'd, I'd say I have spoke to my mum quite regularly and I've been using her because I, evidently I still live with her. And um, even though um, I've asked for a bit of advice on her behalf, I've kind of showed off um, my, my anger side. And also when I have been at the shop, I've said occasional stuff like, like you know, I need time out and I like, go out and just walk about for a bit and then I come back and so I have had the help here with the staff. Yeah we were just saying about how over the last few years Josh has got really 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 good at dealing with his own anxiety and he knows when he needs to go and take five and you know, and just wander around get a bit of fresh air mm. and then back again. We were just saying a really good analogy that someone showed me once was that an autistic person their glass is sort of, oh, you can't see it, it's sort of full to here, whereas other people are sort of halfway up and a change in the day just is enough to tip that glass over the edge. And that was a really useful thing that someone showed me once. Um, another thing that someone said is that once you've met an autistic person, you've done that, you've met one person with autism. And because it is so personal, everybody is so completely different. different. Um, and there's not a, a blanket method to support them. Um, I'll give you a little bit of a background on Sweet Surprise. So we are a day service supporting adults with autism and learning disabilities with a real focus on proper work experience placements. So, I mean, Josh, you've got quite a few work experience that you've done yes, over the years. I've done quite a few work experiences. Um, and here we've got our own cafe and our own kitchen. So pre-COVID, obviously, um, there would be people getting work experience, serving customers in the cafe and working in the kitchen. There's a lot of social activities that go on here because we feel, especially for those on the artistic spectrum, that 
the socialization aspect is so important um so i mean we have discos we have drama club group we do all these things outside of sweet surprise hours also um we have holidays we've been to spain we've been to lapland um because we know how important that socialization is for those people on the autistic spectrum it's not a compulsory thing and you know we understand that especially guys like josh that he will want five minutes to himself so it's about understanding on a real personal level how we can best support people yes yeah yeah and and as as we've said you know each case is different it is very much a spectrum um you know that there, there is no no one um path to to, to, to 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 deal with um individuals that will fit everybody it is all going to be different isn't it um yeah. so in 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 terms of moving forward um and alistair you might want to come in here um i i know um sort of having spoken to to, to, to various people um they've they've made the point that the situation with COVID particularly has been, I mean, we know it's affected people's mental health. Um, we know there's been more cases of mental health issues and depression in, in the wider community. Um, and that has definitely uh, impacted those with autism as well. Um, so moving forward now in terms of a roadmap, you know, can you give us some thoughts on, you know, how you would perhaps like to see support and um, activities available? And I'm, I'm sort of thinking about, um, you know, we're not likely at the moment to return to holding our talking cafes face to face as we used to. Um, but we would very much like to do that when we are allowed to um and is there something that we could do to adapt to make those talking cafes um easier for autistic people to attend alison you're still on mute <laughs> yeah yeah so I, I think i think that we can't um there are just a couple of things to pick up on and i Thank you Josh, for being so candid and and, um, and open with us about some of the challenges because I think that's something that quite often people don't mention. So quite often people don't mention about the frustration and the challenges that within those family dynamics that can happen. So I would say certainly during the lockdown, a lot of families where where they haven't had a break. So the young person hasn't had a break by going to school, and then the family haven't had a break by. <laughs> Or the adult going out and engaging and having, I think that's really, really amazing of you to share that that the frustrations and the anger does come out. So I think that we can't sort of dismiss that. Let's be honest and have candid conversations so we can support people. So thank you so much for that, Josh. That's really, really important. Um, and then to they will actually you need strategies to be able to cope with that, and it's, it might be driven by anxiety my behaviour is driven because I'm not what I'm supposed to do and so this is a kind of a pattern that I'm running um so I just wanted to, to kind of mention that Catherine and Peter mentioned about schools I'm here today at Silverbridge School in Taunton and that's absolutely right and, and Peter was saying how do we adapt schools then to the needs of individuals on the spectrum that may actually be intellectually incredibly high but then lacking some of those social skills so this environment this was set up specifically so on the website, autism set there's a, a bit, on Alison. There. and the first one when they set up a score, I was like, come to Somerset. Oh, she's yeah. frozen on it. So come to Somerset. You need that kind of the school where um you 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 can be high functioning and to have your your academic needs as well as uh, and also just miss girls you know so autism in girls can be very different there can be a lot of masking um we can get this discrepancy where like in school i can hold my my behaviors and tolerance 
and says, I take home or away to school versa. So that can be a real challenge for parents because not everyone sees um, what Josh was talking about, these, you know, these um, what we call meltdowns. But what we also know is that for people on the spectrum, having a meltdown is a part and parcel of who they are and where people have to learn to, to develop that and, and manage it back. There are things that don't don't talk about because it just seems so um, massive. But sometimes even small changes in transition from place to another that that's a big transition for someone. So I'm sure that you know that sweet surprise. Yeah. Is They're breaking up yeah, quite a bit before doing things. But also to say that actually the lockdown for some people has been amazing because. A, Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, so the lockdown has been because it has given people an opportunity to move a lot of things being helpful in some perspective. Mm -hmm. But moving on, position, how you prepare for those transitions, very, very gently, you know, be kind, I would say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I like welcome, welcome back, Peter uh, and Catherine. I think we lost you for a little while. Um, we, we're talking about. I mean, one of the things I know uh, you uh, ran the autism group in West Somerset uh, for a while. Uh, I believe it doesn't uh, exist anymore. But I mean. It, um, it, I mean, is, is there support in the West Somerset area or where would you point people to um, for, for, for support? Um, there's no such group uh, as such in West Somerset as far as I know. Um, there are groups in other places. Um, some of them actually work sort of as NAS, National Autistic Society supported groups, but some of them, uh, rather like um, Alex's, are, are independent ones. Um, so I, I, it's a little bit difficult to track them down sometimes because they, they, they don't um, always get uh, uh, you know, the focus that they deserve. But um, uh, Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 so really, um, and and going back to Alex, um, and I, you're over in Ilminster. I just just um, again to say, I mean, Talking Cafe Live obviously goes out live on Facebook. It's not limited just to Somerset, although uh, we work for the Community Council for Somerset as village agents um, and host the Talking Cafes. Um, so we cover certainly the whole of Somerset. Um, and it's been great to have Alison from Autism Somerset here. Um, and Alex, as we know you're, you're in Ilminster. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so, you know, I think, I mean, looking for um, contacts across uh, Somerset, um, really, it, it, it the, the, the NAS at the moment do not seem to have a, a local Somerset group. Am I right with that? That that's not really operating at the moment. Not that I know. No. 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 Okay. No. The so autism Somerset, Somerset. Yeah. or the or, or going nationally would be where the support would be um, for, for for parents who are. Or, or, or people who are wanting to information at the moment. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Joe. I, I did pass I mean, the uh, chair on to somebody else, but uh, uh, unfortunately, I've heard I've heard nothing since. So I presume that nothing is happening. Yeah. Um, a lady from Plymouth. And uh, so, um, yeah. 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 If yeah. I yeah. do yeah. hear of anything happening, then obviously I'll I'll let you know, Jane. And um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and in terms of um, sort of um, 
the support from uh, local social services and uh, the Sendias service. Do you, Alison, Alex, have contact with them? Often we get sort of referrals to us from the, the local authority and social services, but generally we, we don't have direct links with them. Okay, right. Okay, that's lovely. Um, and you know, really, for people who are who are viewing and listening to us, um, maybe if each of you could just give a couple of thoughts, hints on what you feel that people. I bear in mind that there may, may be people who are watching who have little or no knowledge of autism. Uh, there may be people watching and I will say that um, if anybody wants to post a comment in our comments, please do so. Um, either uh, if you have a question for anybody who's with us um, and secondly, um, if you have a query, uh, you can put that through uh, to our Talking Cafe messages um, and we can get that uh, query through to, to, to the appropriate person. We can follow up on that for you. Um, but, you know, if you had um, sort of just a final two minutes to, to, to pass on your wisdom from your experiences with with autism um what what would be the message you'd want to get across so starting with alison oh you're completely frozen alison maybe we'll come back to you no she's completely frozen. okay peter <laughs> Okay, um, yes, I think, as in with anybody really, treat um, people with respect, even if they are behaving a bit differently to you. Yeah. Um, also, um, remember that if a, if a child is having, uh, on the autistic spectrum, is having a meltdown in the middle of the supermarket, the child is not necessarily being naughty. That may be their, their, their meltdown and that parent may be very embarrassed and very uh, anxious to get out of the situation so don't make things worse by being critical or anything like that and also I think as we've said before each person is an individual and each person on the spectrum is an individual and uh, um, just uh, try and listen think is to, to what uh, they say you know if you if you're working alongside someone uh, who's perhaps on the spectrum or if you're um, got a neighbor or a person in the family who's on the autistic spectrum or has children on the autistic spectrum try and listen, listen try and ask them how they feel about things and uh, see what they have to say and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 be patient be with patient your with your son or daughter yes. they need that, to was, that was that was the term that had come to my mind, mind. Yes. <laughs> yeah yeah okay, okay. And, and, and alex and josh i couldn't agree more with everything that peter just said to be perfectly honest with you i don't think there's anything more that i i could elaborate on however josh is there anything that you would like people to know about autism well i would say that with people with autism that i think people like you said before earlier on you need to be more open-minded to it because a lot of people out there they don't necessarily just disunderstand people with autism but they likely don't even care and like if they're in a job situation then basically with um people with autism or not and, and how they do something in a job that they don't always accept the way autistic people want to follow their job and do things in their own routine and their own sort of way because like for example when i go to my work placements which i've been on i've um you know i, I like to do the jobs and do it to my own ability but sometimes if like things have to get rushed along or hurried up it doesn't always work well and it just drags it out on me and my anxiety just build up and and that can be something very common in me as well 
And I think that's also the same for other people with autism. I think a lot of the employers and people, even if it's on work placement, like at a pub, they don't understand it because they've never had to put up with it in their lives before. Mm. And so generally, and they most likely aren't very open to it either because they've never had to deal with it. Yeah, so, I think so it, it, it's, it's about widening the message, Josh, isn't it? it yeah, it's absolutely. about making people understand um, that it, you know this is this is a condition that some people do live with and manage um, but it does mean that they don't relate in the same way necessarily to people um, and therefore as Catherine said patience and open-mindedness is needed. Yeah. I think the thing to remember as well is that whilst someone with autism might behave differently they don't always look different and that's mm. really difficult for people to understand yeah. why, why are you acting like this yeah um, yeah so non, non-judgmental basically yeah. is it yeah it, yeah it goes back to just being kind yeah absolutely yeah. Mm, yeah. And Alison, do you want to try again? Um, you've frozen up before. You're on mute at the moment. Do you want to try again and see? You're on mute, Alison. Do you want to try taking your camera off, Alison, to see if we can hear you rather than see you? Oh, no, I'm getting that your mic's not connected, I'm afraid. So it looks like we've, 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 lost, <laughs> we've lost contact other than visual contact with Alison, unfortunately. Um, but I'd like to thank everybody for coming along and joining me this morning. Um, it's been really, really good to hear your views and experiences and hopefully um, that for our viewers of Talking Cafe Live um, and this particular session, they've been able to get a little bit of more background on uh, autism and uh, living with autism, where to go for support. Um, as village agents, as I say, we're happy to signpost people to where support can be found. Um, and uh, we are grateful to all of you for joining us today and for all that you do for the people in your community. So thank you, everybody, um, and we'll wrap up for today. Okay, thanks, and bye-bye. Thanks, bye-bye.